You know, there was one time we went to see a show, and uh, during the show, before he did a, a bit that was new and different, gave a little speech, said something to the extent of, uh, when you pay money for a ticket to a, see a show, you want to see them do all the, do all the favorites, all the well-known bits. Uh, and occasionally, you got to test out something new every now and then, right? Uh, so you pay you pay to see all the the good bits, the bits you know, the bits that are famous. And this right now, this is the free shit. So. And I guess, yeah, even when you go to see the big names and stuff, you still gotta try and get the new, the new bits over. Test them out. Get used to them. Get people into them, too. I guess what I'm trying to say is, welcome to Turnabouts of the Father, a Phoenix Wright fan game by Dude with a Mask on East Turning Online. And... To mixed reviews, uh, I say by mixed, I mean uh, all of two people. <laughs> One person who recommended the game to me, and uh, another person I saw somewhere while I was, while I was looking for the uh, Ace Attorney Online link who uh, didn't finish it. So, it's going to be interesting. It's been a while. Now loaded. The trial takes place in an alternate universe. Our protagonist is Apollo Justice. The time has come. This is as good of a chance as I'll ever get. This demon that I've been chasing all these years. I finally see it. And now that I do, I'm afraid. I'm afraid knowing there will be only one way for this to end. I'm afraid knowing that cannot truly win this. The Leviathan. The Phantom of the Night. The one who pulls the, his victims into the darkest depths of the oceans, never to be seen again. Why? I will never know. But why does it matter? Why won't change what he's done? finish this. Turnabouts. Plural of the father. Multiple turnabouts. Multiple turnabouts all in one trial? Five years ago. Maybe it is. Number third. 1025A. Robert Bishop's home. Calm down. It's just don't crack it. Don't let them see anything. Deep breaths. She's gone. There's nothing you can do about it anymore. Just try not to think about it. Although, who am I kidding? I was never one for subtlety. They'll see through me in a second. Well, let them. I mean, for one thing only. Him. Hey, who goes there? Oh, the chief prosecutor. Good morning, Detective Gumshoe. Oh. Uh, hello, sir. I didn't expect to see you here. Nobody generally does. Prosecutors, what I hear, aren't built to walk around outside. <laughs> this is the fresh air inside of blood will melt us. Uh. <laughs> As if. I don't think anything, anything could melt you, sir. Neither do I. And, sir, um, if you wish to give me your condolences, save them, please. I'm much more interested in this. What is this? Well honest with you, there's not much to tell, really. Of course there is. After all, you think it was suicide, don't you? 
Hard to think it was anything but, sir. And let me guess. Windows and doors were all locked. The victim was the only one that was seen entering the room. The gunshot was heard, the door was broken down, and he was found sitting in his chair, dead. He struck again. S sir I know what your chief has told me. But he doesn't exist. But come on! This is the seventh suicide in the past three months. With the exact same MO. And that's not counting. <sighs> Ariel Tips, Philip Rose, Cecilia Darkin, Marcus Long, Jennifer Morton, Anthony Marston. Now Robert Bishop. I refuse to believe that. That. But sir! I know, I know. Sounds impossible. I don't blame you for thinking that. But there's more to this. I know there is. This is his work. Sir, the Leviathan. The Leviathan is behind this. Mark my words. Sir, please. I know what you think. You think because of what happened that I don't know what I'm saying, right? And I'm looking for things that aren't there, right? And because I don't believe she committed suicide, that applies to all of these people, right? Right? I order you to answer me, Jesus. Yes, sir. These people have no seeming reason to have committed suicide. I don't know how, and I don't know why, but... You know, there's someone manipulating these events. It's me! Is there really? Hmm? Huh? Oh, hello. Even you must realize how foolish you sound at this point. Francisca, I did not expect to see you here. I didn't expect to see you here either, quite frankly. How are you doing? What do you think? I know you've heard things about me. Most of them are, I'm ashamed to admit, true. But I refuse to believe that my wife, Chief Prosecutor, I have no interest in your personal life. What I do have an interest in is in a in is how it will affect you personally. With all due respect, the Leviathan does exist. There is no seeming connection between these people. They aren't part of a cult. There isn't a clear culprit. Hmm. No. There isn't a clear method of murder here. I'm sorry, but... You're not sorry. You're Francisca von Karp. You can't feel sorry. I'm still a human being, Chief Prosecutor. And I am advising you as a human being to step away from this case. This is not a work of some mastermind serial killer. So you think I'm delusional? You're coming off as very delusional. I think you're broken. Hmm, direct, aren't we? I think you need to leave this crime scene. This isn't over. For your sake, I hope it is. I'm going to find him, you hear me? I hear you. But I don't think you hear yourself. Bah. I might as well be in charge, then. Just leave a report on my desk by tomorrow morning. Yes. Chief Prosecutor. Well, then. Five years later. And we're Apollo Justice. Well, last time, I'm not going. Oh, come now, Apollo. You can't keep going at this childish game forever. It's not a game. I refuse to see that man ever again. Apollo. You drove my mother to suicide. Oh, wow. How can I ever forgive something like that? You betrayed her. He humiliated her. Can you honestly say that was his intention? Oh boy. Apollo, he loved her. Just as he loves you. Yes, he loved us so much that he was seeing another woman behind her our back. Oh boy. Look. Miss Grambier. Oh. I 
appreciate what you're trying to do, but I refuse. I can't. Not for him. At least do it for the client. The client, which is probably one of his friends? I don't think so. He's chief prosecutor. Can't he deal with it himself? I think you just summed up why he can't do that. You're the defense attorney. Oh, come on. Everyone knows that he's crooked. He probably set the entire trial up to go in his favor. We're just saying that out of spite now. And what if I am? Not like he doesn't deserve it. Besides, why should I go? For one, he didn't even come to see me himself. If he wanted a favor so badly, I think he could have at least done that much. Because he's nervous and afraid. Come on. You two can't keep going on like this. I keep saying that, but it's been five years. I'm doing just fine. Ha 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 ha. You see what we did there. Please, just give, give him a chance. To hell with him. Besides, defending someone in court isn't exactly father son bonding material. Apollo, please. Not for him. Do it for me. Miss Grammier, I appreciate everything you've done for me since since mothers, but I can't. I won't. I see. A magician who has the unfortunate luck of being friends with my family. The Lassa Grammier. You've probably heard of her. She runs the Night Hour radio show. Oh. Practically unmatched in the field of magic. Levitations, disappearances, hypnotism, death defying stunts. I don't think there's anything she can't do. Well, there is one thing. And that's convincing me to take this case. I'm sorry. But it won't happen. I'll tell you one thing, I gotta look up this song after all this. It's lovely. Well, if you change your mind, I won't. If you change your mind, go to lobby number five. Have a good day, Apollo. Goodbye, Miss Grammyer. And how many times must I tell you to call me Thalassa? We're not strangers anymore, you know. Sure. Alasa it is. Also, I won't be able to make it to tonight's show. Don't worry about it. You were at last month's. Ooh. Well then. I'm not sure I believe that, though. Everyone's a stranger, really. The more you think you know about a person, the more you're setting yourself up for a fall. Aries Justice. I thought I knew you. My mother thought she knew you. And yet, what you did, I'll never forgive you, you hear. Hmm. What has he even been doing for those five years? Has he been with that woman? without a face or a name? A woman that was so important to throw away our entire family for? Why? Why was she so important? So special? Were you bored? Or did you just not care? I never asked him that. I never... God damn it. God damn it! Hmm. Well, okay. Time to go to court. We are, uh... This is the Apollo Justice, uh, angsty family drama universe. Alternate universe. Where is he? Sir? Ares Justice. Where is he? Sir, a trial is about to take place. If you are not involved, then I would please like to ask you to leave. 
Where is Ares Justice? Sir! Fine, I'm the damn defense attorney. Now, where is he? Sir, what is your name? Apollo Justice. Now, for the last time, where is... Right behind you. <laughs> Hello, Apollo. Ares. Not even father. It's that bad, is it? You sound as if you're surprised. I'm not. I was hopeful, though. Ares Justice, my father. Of course, he's more widely known as Chief Prosecutor. How much he lives up to that name, I couldn't honestly tell you. Even before everything that happened, I didn't really care about his career. I knew I wanted to be a defense attorney, and he respected that. It's one of those few things I can thank him for. Paying through law school. Oh, <laughs> well. I'm sure as hell won't erase what he's done. I suppose the fact that you showed up is a good sign on its own, though. I assure you, I didn't come for any of the reasons you think I did. Of course not. After all, I could never have recently expected you to have forgiven me. Not yet, at least. Not ever. So you say. So I know. Yes, I came here for the trial. Yes, that much is obvious. No, I came here to judge by the fact that you accepted the case so hastily. I imagine the last I never told you. Told me what? The nature of this trial. I don't care, right? Oh, well, be quiet for a minute, would you? This trial. It's not something you would pro would have probably wanted to get involved in. That's probably... That's not just because I'm asking you to take it. What do you mean? It's mainly regarding the defendant of the case. Can you please stop being vague and get to the point already? Hmm. I thought I'd have raised you to be more patient. Not for people like you. Not to mention you did very little of the actual raising, you bastard. The defendant in this case is also the victim. Whoa. What? What? The nature of this trial is as follows. The defendant is accused of committing suicide. But you as the defense must show that the, that it, that this is not the case. What? <laughs> is this some kind of a sick joke? Do I look like I'm laughing? One month ago. An apparent suicide had occurred. There are thanks to suspicious circumstances and a lot of convincing. The High Court agreed to have this trial. The trial closed off from the public, of course. You can imagine why. We'd all look like idiots. How exactly does something like this even happen? Can't you just reopen the investigation? The investigators are beyond convinced of their of their conclusion. As such, I had no choice but to... Wait, you? You pushed for this trial? Yes. I had no choice. You've got to be kidding me. I wish I was. Paul, I might be the chief prosecutor, but I can't influence the, the police department that much. Not without valid reason. S so, you dragged me down here. So I can defend a dead guy? If you wish to put it like that. <laughs> screw you. Wait, Apollo. No, screw you. I said wait. This trial is of utmost importance. And why is that? Oh, wait. Let me guess. You can't tell me. Apollo. Of course. Figures, yeah. Hey, here's a question. How exactly am I supposed to do this? Please don't admit this was anything but suicide. That means there's no evidence suggesting it. If there's no evidence suggesting it, what the hell am I supposed to work with? Blindly accusing people? 
No. I want you to use your brain. I and alternate explanations for the events that took place on the night of the crime. Ha! <laughs> crime. You know, I guess at your old age you're forgetting one important thing. This is a court of law. You can speculate day and night, but how am I supposed to prove? Just show the possibilities. As long as there's a chance that this wasn't actually a suicide, then the investigation can at least be reopened officially. Trust me, considering the circumstances of the actual death, you'll find it to be more than a formidable challenge. I don't believe this. I'm actually standing here, listening to this crap. You actually came down here. I wanted to ask you something, but this... This is just... Rotten hell. I'm going home. No, you're not. Who the hell are you to test say that? Hmm? Oh, nobody in particular. But I can't say the same for that we live over there. Hmm, <coughs> have you forgotten? You introduced yourself as a defense attorney in the case and gave him your name. Well, what? He was instructed to fill out the substitution of attorney petition upon your arrival. Instructed by me, of course. Oh boy. Oh, screw you. Eventually, the case was to be handled by a state-appointed attorney, but... Upon seeing you approach the courthouse, I let him go. At this point in time, you are leaving the defense. Which means that you can no longer leave this courthouse until you finish the trial. Oh boy. I strongly suggest that you do not box this Apollo. It's only a matter of time before they learn about the trial. It would be shame if word got out that you accepted such a ridiculous case, and then failed to hold your own. They would call you a madman, make you a laughing stock. You. You. As such, I expect you to do your best. The prosecutor is someone who wouldn't be playing around, either. Perhaps you've heard of Francisca von Kahn. Are you kidding me? I appointed her myself. What kind of a goddamn sociopath are you? The one who trusts your abilities. Why would someone like Von Karma even agree to something like this? Surely someone like her would piece together that this is... insane. Now listen carefully. I'd rather not. You will need this information, so listen. The victim's name is Larry Bow. <laughs> Apparently shot himself in his home on. Oh, just shut up. Not like you'll tell me anything I won't find out from the opening statement. Wait, Larry Butts? The medium guy? What? Yes, the medium guy. Only male capable of performing the... Really? that you're just taking the piss here just for the sake of taking the piss here, but <laughs> I could also turn it around and posit that you invented the sh you invented the shaggy meme before shaggy became a meme. I've even speculated that he could pass through wall. Actually, some of that is debatable, but he... He's the guy who contacted the channel. Your mother, yes. In fact, I've been contacting him for the past five years. What? He's a fraud. They all are. Come on, I thought you'd be the smarter than this. In any case, we got to know each other quite well over that time. Mr. Butts was a man of many things. Different figurines, just late night radio dramas. And he was considered to be relatively happy. Such a suicide simply doesn't make much sense. 
Having a piece of information can make this worse for me. You... You're insane. You're the right man for letting you keep that badge. I can't believe Miss Grammier actually convinced me to do this. She didn't. I believe I told you to call me Thalassa, but... Just like I told you that he would show up, Ares. Thalassa. I didn't think you'd stick around for the, for the actual trial. And why not? Nothing else will be interesting to watch. I thought you said it would be closed off to the public. Don't you know, Apollo? I'm special. <sighs> God damn it all. Also, you should probably stop saying God damn it so much. It's bad for you. You'll actually appear. Yes, I'll make everything PG-13 and ruin all the kids. Why'd I listen to you, honestly? Imagine it must be my charm. It's actually mind control. Yeah, it is. Well, good to know you were terrible since you were still there, old man. Oh, see, you're now old man. He already likes you a little more. Everything he said so far has served to suggest otherwise. Finally, something logical from you. Apollo. Oh, sorry. I'm not exactly in the mood, but... Being practically black and doing this didn't really help it out. You came here of your own free will. Yeah, not exactly. Can't say the same for my ability to leave. True. You should have been aware of such a risk upon coming, shouldn't you? It, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I didn't think you'd actually be as vile and twisted as in my imagination. You're being a bit harsh now, aren't you? No, not really. Speaking the truth. The truth is really so simple. Sometimes the truth is relevant. Sometimes the consequences are far more important. All that matters is the results. On that, I suppose we can agree. Okay, can we get on with this, please? Now get out of my way. Play your damn game, whatever it is. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, sure you don't. Why would you care if some medium committed suicide? You must have a poor memory of me if you think I was ever that gullible. You're more transparent than you let on, Ares. Think what you will. I don't care. You have your duty, and I have mine. I'm sure you do. But just so you know, this hurts my career. You might just throw it out and feed it to the dogs. Yes, yes. Actually, I can say just kill you, but I guess that works too. Yep, fair enough. Have fun. Yeah, fun. Try and pick the craziest person in this room at the moment. Me for showing up, him for doing this, or you for supporting him. At this point, I don't think the audience can go, can't go wrong with any pick. Yep. Oh, that's a bit mean, don't you think? Can we just get on with it? I say it's pretty tame. In any case, I do wish you good luck. Yeah, that'll carry me through this entire thing, I'm sure. Whatever. I say something like, How did I get myself involved in this mess? Probably be pretty redundant at this point, yes. Let's get this over with. Here comes a really pissed off defense attorney. I see what you're doing there. Oh, boy. Your court really does feel empty. Well, I guess it's a good thing. I don't want anyone to watch this. This farce. It's been a while since I've actually been here. I've been out of the country for the past year or so. And well, up until then, it just hadn't exactly been booming. Maybe it's just because I've gotten somewhat of a reputation. For pointing out killers where you at least expect them. But this won't exactly boot it back up. Oh boy. Or is now in the session for the trial of um, Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, I suppose. Do you suppose? Ahem, I had to step away for a bit, but let's continue with this. What's so strange about that? Well, 
this fun crime are usually a bit more... This is a suicide trial. What on earth could I say? That isn't exactly something I was taught for in law school. And this is most certainly not something I would have taken if not for... My father. Ah, you must be Apollo Justice. Allow me to introduce myself. Oh, there's no need. I'm already aware. Ow. What the hell? You can't do that. Mr. Aries Justice gave me special permission to treat his son however I pleased. Oh, wow. Thanks, Dad. How kind of him, wouldn't you say? Never imagined one of the Von Karmas to be a freaking dominatrix. <laughs> I was kind of joking, but has anyone actually gone completely insane? Why on earth are you looking at me like that? How am I supposed to look at someone who just whipped me? That Hmm, yes, I see your point. Still, <laughs> you should take some comfort. You're not taking it better than most. Rather, you didn't whip me at all. But how will I enact my frustration over this foolish situation? I don't know. Write a strongly worded letter or something. Yeah. Your Honor, I object to this. I refuse to be abused in this court of law. Miss Von Karma, please restrain yourself. It would lead me to a suicide trial. How pathetic, wouldn't you say, Apollo Justice? Hey, I didn't exactly go in knowing what I was getting into. Huh. Of course you didn't. If you had half a brain, you would have seen this for the waste of time that it, that it is. But in any case, if I didn't get literally conned into this case, maybe I would have walked out. The end. Would you get on with it already? Uh, huh? Are you ready or not? Um, ooh, right. Yeah, sh the defense is, um... Ready. Your line is ready. I swear, this culminates with me having a trial against myself. I swear to God, that's that's gotta be a reference to another one of the uh, fan cases that were recommended to me by a kind commenter. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm not ready, though. Narrator voice. He was not, in fact, ready. I should have actually stuck around and listened to that old geezer. He didn't look that old. Actually, probably not. I think I would have snapped somewhere down the line. I mean, I'm just waiting for it. He, he revealed the whole thing happened on Mars. Mm, ain't you so much, old man. Mm. Very well. In that case, the court shall hear your opening statement, Miss Von Karma. And I shall deliver it with pleasure, Your Honor. However, there is one thing that I would like to be immediately settled. And what thing would that be? I will outline every aspect of this case right here and now. And from it, I want Mr. Apollo Justice to give me a valid reason. Why I should doubt that this is a suicide. After all, what's the point in bringing out all the witnesses if there is no real claim? This isn't a retrial, but a desperate attempt to prove a fantasy. Ahem. With all due respect to the chief prosecutor, that is. With ever-dwindling respect to the chief prosecutor. So you're saying that I need to essentially prove that this isn't a suicide right from the get-go? At least give me a reason to doubt it. But let me assure you, there isn't one. This case has been looked at from every angle, and nothing has been found. This trial is pointless. My involvement in it even more so. And here's why. Why? Here's why. A waste of time. I hardly see any reason why this charade is even happening. The victim, Mr. Butts, committed suicide, plain and simple. But, if I must go through the events for the sake of this lunacy, I suppose I have no other choice. Okay, that's three pointless statements. On November 3rd, there were four people at Mr. Butts' house where the crime occurred. Uh, Mr. Butts, his wife, his maid, and a friend of his. friend arrived at around 9pm at the house. Mr. Butts and he went to the dining room and had a private conversation. 
as were Mr. Butts always admitted his guests when it came to such occasions. Half an hour later, a friend left the house. Mr. Butts stayed in the dining room. His maid came in to check on him at 9.45. He assured her everything was fine and sent her off. He closed and locked the only door to the dining room himself from the inside. Around 10 p.m., the friend returned, after he realized he had forgotten something. He and the maid went to get Mr. Butts, but apparently still been in the dining room. And they heard a gunshot from the inside. The door was still locked, so they had no choice but to break it down. Inside, they found Mr. Butts dead, with a gun in his hand and a bullet hole in his left temple. No, there was nobody hiding in the room. friend checked the window and found it closed and locked from the inside. The maid checked the body and found a key in Mr. Butts' pocket. On stepping out of the room, he bumped into the wife who was wondering what had happened. So if there was a culprit in this scenario, who could it possibly be? All of the above, naturally. Yikes. That's a lot to take in. From your behavior up at this point, I can assume that you came in here with nothing more than those clothes and pocket change and my spiky hair. Well, I got my badge, too. It, yeah, that is also, that is true. How? What I'm saying is that you came unprepared, you fool. Here. Consider this a token of apology for all the weeping so far. The autopsy report. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's also a token of apology for all the weepings to come. Fair enough. How comforting. Isn't it? Autopsy report. Well, let's do the thing. Big head mode. Larry Madeline Butts, age 35, gender male. Chevrilling suicide. 9.30, 10 p.m. Blow to the head, death instantaneous. Pressed against Mr. Butts' temple, no other external injuries. Medical file. Breathing issues. Some of his lung tissue was damaged. Further examination was necessary. Oh. Is there some kind of chemical involved? Are we going to play that game? Chief Prosecutor and my father, he's the reason my entire world fell apart five years ago. He's the reason my mother took in its suicide, spice and everything about him. And yet somehow I allowed him to draft me into this. That's me. Well, half of me. Horns are kinda, um, well, you know. It's just one problem with having horns, they're their own thing. The Lassa is a broken JPEG. Good family friend, talented illusionist, perhaps the best in her business, able to do disappearances, levitations, hypnosis tricks. I'm not sure if there's anyone quite like her. I was a host radio show, but about magic called the Night Hour. Prosecutor, Von Karma, Von Karma, a Von Karma will always be Von Karma, even in alternate universe scenarios. I mean, honestly, as uh, a bit overdramatic as the family drama is, it makes sense, at least. Why the why? Apollo would feel that way. But <laughs> I mean this is the this is the only ridiculous thing about the this alternate universe scenario so far. That Larry Butts is the hyper competent spirit medium. Don't seem to have any any reason for committing suicide, figurines, late night radio dramas, your average Joe. Mystery, mystery wife, mystery friend, is it Phoenix Wright? Mystery maid. Okay, fair enough. Moving along. Now, do your best. Might as well get some entertainment out of this. Must really look like a complete and utter idiot right now, then. Oh, might as well do this, then. Aries will probably never let me leave this courtroom otherwise. Fucking Aries. <laughs> oh, 
Well, sure, why not? Maybe, maybe he's stashed somewhere. Because I'm a sociopath with too much authority? Obviously, for the sake of my job, I can't exactly agree with that. However, I'm inclined to believe that even people such as that have reasons behind doing what they do. In this case, however, I admit I'm struggling to find any. The case is absurd. They opened it shut, if you ask me. Obviously, they forgot to ask you. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's irrelevant. Because many people share my judgment on the matter. And their judgments were promptly ignored. Hmm. Chain of command really is a beautiful thing, isn't it? If you favor grotesques, yes. In any case, I suppose I can't argue with my assignment. I will do my duty, and I will do it well. I am still a Von Karma, after all. And I am a justice, unfortunately. Alright. Got a lot of shit to sort out here. Obviously not simple enough. Depends on who you ask. If you were to, say, ask the evidence, then you'll find that it is indeed simple. Huh, well, Miss Von Karma, you have to keep in mind. You've seen over the years that evidence can be interpreted in many different ways. And yet sometimes, such as in this case, everything is so blatantly obvious that it actually physically hurts. As Apollo Justice will see for himself quite soon. Oh, trust me, I'm already feeling the pain. Well, let's see what happens. Could just... Are we truly to have this discussion right now? I practically already said everything had happened. Uh, true. Let me continue. Four people at Mr. Butts' house. So a whole month has passed, huh? Essentially, yes. Of course, the key prosecutor's request was filed immediately, but... It took some time for the prosecutor's committee to... Take it seriously. For lack of a better term, yes. Alright then. Hmm, I wish I'd like to drag the old bastard's name through the mud. Crowd, there's much point to it. And he already knows what I think of him, so. Guess I'll focus on the crime instead. Fine, Dad. Huh, look at me go. Crime. So, where did Mr. Butts live? Is there any relevance to such a question? I don't know. <laughs> Answer it, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Such impertinence! This trial may be absurd, but do not think of me as an absurd woman for participating in it. Either answer my question properly, or get nothing at all. Hey, I got a whipping. That's not exactly nothing. Alright, fair enough. For the time being, it's irrelevant. At least for the time being. Okay. Butts, wife, maid, friend. And all of these people, uh, aside from Mr. Butts, are witnesses? Yes. Honestly, the whole thing sounds like a start to a joke. Or a movie title. And I imagine I'll hear testimony from all of them. Not if you can't give us a valid reason that this isn't suicide. Right, right. I still remember. Then why do you ask such a pointless question? I'm, uh, just checking? That. Okay, sorry, jeez. I am PM at the house. What was the reason for that visit? For what we understand, it was more or less a business meeting. The guest was Mr. Buss's legal advisor, you see. So they weren't exactly friends, uh, business partners, business associates. I don't recall saying something like that. In fact, if there was one thing I've been stressing, is that it is that he was a friend. Hmm. That's quite a prejudice you have against legal advisors, Mr. Justice. I'm a legal advisor myself, you know. That isn't what I meant. Okay, moving on. I'm quite certain that he arrived at 9 p.m. The wife made and guessed himself. Oh, willing to testify that was the case. The feeling that I should pay at least some attention to the times. On the other hand, the events don't seem particularly complicated. Seriously, a suicide case? Okay, prior conversation. Dining room, huh? Can you describe it for me, perhaps? I mean, it is the crime scene, so... Hmm, fair enough. You're entitled to that much, I suppose. Earlier, I, compl I complied... 
myself, compiled myself all the information I had in the house. Which includes the dining room. Yeah, you might as well have it. Uh, really? I have it memorized. Naturally, had you prepared even slightly, I wouldn't be needing to part with it. Not for the sake of entertainment. <laughs> you know, it's a star you set really cruel. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? This is a circus. Okay, this is interesting. The house is one of the rare few that is situated within the city itself. Not especially good looking. The garden is well kept. You can see the window to the dining room. The house only has one floor. Okay, a table in the center of the room. Four chairs in total. Bunch of fountain, the one facing the door. The far side of the table. With his back turned to the window. Covered. Of interest, a radio, plays cassette tapes, that's gonna be relevant, ashtray, <coughs> cigarette butts in it, shelf, public figurines, painting above the door, no possible hiding places, butts is a ledger, Elizabeth Short, Elizabeth Brown, Adam Brown, Joseph Lenz, Aries Justice, Michael Black, Grimoire, other than P. Answer Sloan. About a hundred or so names in total. Boy. Uh, okay, let's see what we have here. There's not much to it, but I think this will be pretty useful later on. Yeah, I can even use it as just a jumping point for me. But how? Alright. That's an interesting bit of information. Not particularly. It's a detail the wife happened to mention once or twice during the interviews. So I ended up taking note. Or at least I did. Mr. Butts was, I understand, a man of habit. Surprisingly traditional. I'm not gonna ask why this surprisingly is there. Because he's Larry Butts. And such, he always saw his business just guests in private. I wouldn't exactly call admitting people in dining rooms traditional. Man didn't have a study. What else was what else was he to do? Uh living room? I deny his wife entrance to it in the middle of the night. Well, just to say you were insinuating that she was to go to the kitchen? Um what? Are you that kind of a man? I'm really confused. What? What did that have to do with anything? I don't expect an Aries to have raised you anything. Okay. Yet, let's just move on. That was bad. Well, well, someone's awfully tipsy. But again, I suppose it's only understandable, considering. Please don't. Right. So. Moving on. 9.30, the friend left the house. Mr. Buzz stayed in the dining room. Why? Isn't it obvious? He wanted to enjoy his last moments in peace and quiet. That's quite an assumption. Considering what happened next, it's quite a logical one, wouldn't you, th wouldn't you say? Hmph. But you're right. It's impossible to tell what goes through the head of someone who takes their own life. Yes, that is true. Impossible to know? No, not always. That's all I know, like... Not brooding time, Paul. Time to focus. She's talking to you, I think. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just brooding. Please continue. Checked on about 9.45. She was the last person to see him alive? Indeed. 
despite her age, she's handling the stress of it all quite well. How much credit should be given to her? I'd like to ask how old is she, but... I can't help but think that it would be taken the wrong way. In any case, to clarify, yes. Up until the guests return, nobody approached the dining room door. Well, that's what you say, but... I wonder if there's any actual evidence for that. Is there anything I can exploit? Close and lock the only door to the... Close and lock the only door to the dining room himself from the inside. How could he say that conclusively? One word. Testimony. Made herself heard the door being locked. Is it possible she lied? It still doesn't change the fact that the door was locked at the time of the, at the time of discovery. As such, it's a lot more probable that she didn't. Probable isn't always right. Let's put it to a test, shall we? It's probable that I will hit you with my whip right now. Nah, it's definitely not right. My point is, can you actually show me some proof? Or at the very least, present a cohesive theory. How does that point relate to me being whipped? Friend returned at 10. Yes, he forgot something. What did he forget? I mean, it sounds pretty convenient, considering everything. Not to mention suspicious. It was a locket. Apparently, it meant quite a lot to him from to the point that he needed to get it back. I can personally relate. On one occasion, I happened to forget my whip before an important case. And it had been quite stressful for me. Oh yeah, poor you. Ah, I know what you mean. One time I forgot my grandchild in an amusement park. I uh, ended up accidentally joining the circus. It took us three days to actually track her down. We slept in a lion cage. What? According to other performers, the lions came to respect her. Uh, oh. They called her their queen. Um. What? Bananas! Anyways, we should probably proceed. No, wait, seriously, what was that last part about? <laughs> Want to get Mr. Butts in the dining room? What do you mean, apparently? Apologies, I guess I misworded it. I had no reason to believe he was anywhere else but the dining room. I hadn't seen any trace of him in the, la in the house. They could only assume he was still in the dining room. Thus, they went to the dining room. Logical, no? no? Yeah, I guess it is. That was... When they heard a gunshot from the inside. And there sure was a gunshot. Why would they doubt it? Gunshot is a gunshot, after all. Objection! Couldn't it have been something else? Objection! Like what? The fact is... Considering everything, it was a gunshot. Plain and simple. What do you not understand about that? W well Piece of advice. Don't seek things that aren't there. It only leads to bad things. Is that from experience? Ooh. I don't believe I said that. Um, right. Sorry. The obvious quirk, was it though? Yes, yes it was. Is that the cassette player was playing... Yes, yes it was. It was playing a tape that had a gunshot on it. Both a maid and the friend are willing to testify that is much the case. Don't you ever try suggesting that they both lied if you don't have any proof? Speculating without any proof seems like the only way forward here, though. <laughs> I guess for the time being, I should try and stick with the assumption that what happened did happen. But certain events didn't mean what they actually seemed to mean. That makes sense. The lock is now damaged. 
so we can't provide conclusive evidence as to how it worked, but I can easily tell you that there was no auto lock involved. I see. Oh, you won't question that? Imagine he couldn't could have just contacted the locksmith and set the door up. Clever boy, yes we did just that. Given the pressure, we couldn't leave any stone unturned, could we? Suppose we couldn't, no. Dad, the gun in his hand, the bullet hole in his left temple. Gun, huh? Where did it come from? Interesting. Um, why? I was partially expecting you to ask if he was really dead. <laughs> Imagine he wouldn't have let Matt pass. You match it well. In any case, we're unaware of the origin of the gun. The serial's been scratched off, you see. My wife didn't appear to be aware of it either. Doesn't that prove that no? <laughs> it really means that Mr. Butts got it without his wife's knowledge. It's unknown how long he might have been planning his suicide after all. Considering the gun only had his fingerprints, that it was found in his hand. Well, it paints quite a clear picture, wouldn't you say? For the moment. I suppose yes. The gun was also fired only once that night. The ballistics matched the bullet found inside his head. What a grisly way to go. I can't imagine the shock of stumbling across such a scene. What was that about? One thing that should be mentioned. Unless it's about his mother. No, there was nobody else hiding in the room. It's really impossible. I stood in the room myself. Trust me, there's nowhere to hide. No bother suggesting something like that. They stood behind the door. It's not a possibility either. One would have been instantly noticed. At the very least, escape would have been impossible without one being noticed. Well, maybe. Both of them would have noticed it. No, oh, please, don't go around suggesting accomplices. Or if you do, make it a bit more reasonable. And nothing to, there's nothing to, to suggest either of them would have helped out with the murder. That's true. I'm going to call them out. Call out them as accomplices. Might as well call them out as culprits. Well, when I simply don't have the information to work with here. I obviously can't claim they're all lying. It just looks, well, kind of sad. At least, in, at least in when it comes to actually proving it. You'd be more sensible if I'm going to come up with some kind of a theory here. God, there's still fucking shit to press. Hold it. Is there anything I should know about the window? A couple of things, I suppose. Closed and locked, I mean. It has to be fully closed and locked from the inside. Only possible to be done from inside the actual room. Human being, no auto lock. In what situation? Well, in no situation. None. Oh, window is window is evidence. Interesting. As for the maid, keep the room, I imagine, naturally. The door being damaged. We to establish it did unlock it, thanks to the fact that a part of the mechanism was still intact. Also questioned the locksmith that produced the key and confirmed that only one key was ever made. There's no proof that a replica of any kind ever existed. And to consider the nature of the uh, Mr. Brother probably always had it on him. I see. And the most obvious suicide ever, or a locked room murder. I have to say it's a ladder. Damn it! Locked room. Why'd it have to be a locked room? Okay, wife's here. What this essentially means is that it's impossible for her to be the culprit. Well, that's one down, I suppose. And again, I suppose saying culprit isn't right here. Hmm. Thanks. Really? If you're going to suggest anything, then please say it. 
Don't interrupt me. <laughs> Ow! Learn some manners. <laughs> Says the one who whipped me. <laughs> I suppose there's only one thing to get through this. Take a look at as I can. Alternate explanation for what happened. Be presenting direct contradictions. That ought to be easy. Instead of X, Y could have happened. That sounds really forced, but I'll lift any choice here. Something else, like what? Okay, let's save. Objection! Okay, that's a thing. You're in the facts, you're right. It does seem impossible for someone to approach, pull this off. Starting so soon. It's a shame I expected a bit more from you. And it's impossible for someone to have pulled this off. Under the assumed circumstances. What is that supposed to mean? Here's the basic outline of what had to have happened. Culbert had to have been in the room to kill Mr. Butts. Assuming there is one. Assuming there is one. When Mr. Butts was killed, gunshot must have been heard. That shot was heard by the two witnesses. They immediately reacted on it. The way they did so makes it impossible for the culprit to have been in the room at the time. So again, assuming there is a culprit at work here, it stands to reason that he couldn't have been in the room at all at the time. So it stands to reason that he doesn't exist. Objection! That's not what I said. What I said was, when the gunshot was heard... Culbert was already long gone. And how exactly is that possible? The gun was fired only once. The bullet was in Mr. Butts' head. Well, let me guess. The culprit was a ghost. No, come on. I thought you'd be smarter than this, considering your family name. It means two things. One, since the culprit wasn't in the room, it must mean that he already left. If he already left, it means that Mr. Butts must have been dead. Two, if Mr. Butts was already dead, that means that whatever they had, what they heard wasn't actually a gunshot. Objection. Not actually a gunshot. Oh my god. First off, do you even have proof that Mr. Butts was dead by the time the gunshot was heard? Proof? Oh, not quite. Do you have proof that it was possible for him to have been dead at the trap point? Autopsy report? Right after all, the autopsy states that time of death could have been anywhere between 9.30 and 10 p.m. That on its own hardly proves anything. True, but it does leave the possibility open. Now, I'm going to 
consider all the facts. Even if he was killed earlier, why was only one gunshot heard? Simple. The killer most likely used a silencer. Then set off a mechanism to appear as if the actual gunshot occurred later. A mechanism, you say? It had to have been because of something other than the gun. Since, as you say, it was fired only once. Well, then, I'd quite like to hear what that mechanism was. Of course. Allow me to show you with this. The crime scene information? Well, obviously. I must say, I was half expecting you to claim that it was a robot. That self destructed after its role was complete. <laughs> Who would come up with that? Something like that. Very well, then. A part of this points to the mechanism. And that's. Just the dining room. Objects in that room correspond to this. Cove responds to this mechanism. The radio. It's the radio. This has the function of playing tapes. We are getting somewhere surprisingly well. We'll continue next time. <laughs>